On the night after Stormy Daniels spoke exclusively to 60 Minutes, it is now the lawyers who are doing all the talking. There is a flurry of legal activity tonight. It's coming from the porn star's camp and for an attorney for the president's personal attorney. Kick on political reporter Dave Bryan is here to sort it all out for us today, Dave. And we got a little preview in case this does wind up uh, being tried in a court, how this might work out. Two of the growing list of attorneys involved in this case faced off on CNN Monday night. Not surprisingly, they spent much of the time sniping at one another, but they did manage to present their positions on the most recent lawsuits that are flying back and forth at a frightening pace. Well, I'm waiting for you okay, to come and, into the case. And, okay, and when are you going to get off the sidelines? Get off the sidelines and get, or, the okay, and, and and get or, in the case. I don't, I don't get off the sidelines. Well, I what? have a case. Hey, you know what? In between the finger-pointing, screaming attacks on one another, attorneys representing Donald Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, and adult film actress, Stormy Daniels, talked on CNN Monday night about the latest developments in their counter-lawsuits against their respective clients. On Monday, Daniels escalated the legal battle against President Trump by charging that Michael Cohen, Trump's personal attorney, defamed her by insinuating that she lied about her alleged sexual affair with Trump in 2006. We've named Michael Cohen individually as it relates to what we allege are defamatory statements that he made. Namely, he made some statements earlier this year uh, whereby he basically said that the affair never happened uh, in not so many words and uh, made my client out to be a liar. You know, Michael Cohen has a lot of explaining to do relating to his statements to the American people. Cohen's attorney fired back. Michael Cohen is going to litigate this case in a court of competent jurisdiction. There's a judge out in California. He's going to litigate the case there. You are litigating the case in the court of public opinion. No, both. Okay, because, I, because, okay. because that's, because that's, that's the forum that you want to be in, and, that's, and, that, and you're using this case for ulterior motive. Okay. This judge is going to throw this case right out. This is, this is a frivolous case. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute frivolous case. And by the way, your client has already breached the contract. Sunday night, another attorney representing Cohen sent Daniels a cease and desist order, denying that his client sent a thug to threaten Daniels if she crossed Trump, which Daniels claimed in the Sunday night interview with 60 Minutes. I was in a parking lot going to a fitness class with my infant daughter, and a guy walked up on me and said to me, leave Trump alone, forget the story. And then he leaned around and looked at my daughter and said, it's a beautiful little girl, it'd be a shame if something happened to her mom. And then he was gone. You took it as a direct threat? Absolutely. Meanwhile, at the White House, the denials that any sexual relationship ever took place between Mr. Trump and Ms. Daniels continued. The president strongly, clearly, and uh, has consistently denied these underlying uh, claims. Without specifying what news he was referring to, President Trump, who has never responded to his accusers, Stormy Daniels or Karen McDougal by name, turned to Twitter to complain about so much fake news. But the timing of the hush payment could expose Cohen and the Trump campaign to possible legal jeopardy, according to a CBS legal analyst. Why would they do this agreement at that time? The obvious answer is to affect the election results. That could trigger a civil or criminal prosecution. But Cohen's attorney says his client did nothing wrong. Mr. Cohen paid the $130,000, but the reason is to protect business, protect reputation, and to protect family. Now, the New York Times is reporting tonight that President Trump's personal behavior issues may be taking a toll on the Republican Party. The Times says more than 40 congressional Republicans have already announced they will not be running for re-election. At least one of those lawmakers, Republican Ryan Costello from Pennsylvania, told the paper that President Trump's personal conduct made it impossible for him to talk about anything else. Jeff, Elsa, back okay. to you. Yeah.